you're live. Am I? Yes. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenny Monday Club and today it's really special. I'd like to extend a big big thanks to Rails of Sheffield who have very very kindly loaned us uh, six terriers. So adding that to the one Rails of Sheffield terrier that I got from the first batch, that's seven Rails of Sheffield terriers going around. We've also got some Hornby ones as well. And actually what's interesting is it's for the first time I've been able to compare like with like and I've actually got a Hornby Brighton and a Rails Brighton and those of you who've been looking on some of the Facebook groups may have actually seen that uh, I posted a photograph of the two of them side by side and I know there's been so much debate with people saying oh it's supposed to be a thoroughbred terrier and like you know oh it, it's not as good on this as I wanted and not as good on that and actually when you put them side by side, there is a lot of better detail on the uh, Rails of Sheffield version. It's quite interesting, actually. You can see that the extra mile has gone. So later on this week, we're going to be doing a full review of the uh, Rails Daypole Terriers. Um, but we've also got uh, an exclusive first, I suppose, first play. Uh, of the Sound Terrier Box Hill. So somewhere... Crank it up, baby. Yes. Um, somewhere... Make it bark. Make that terrier bark. So it's. I'm going to turn the sound on. Normally I don't run things with the sound on, but I'm going to turn that one with the sound on. It's a um, Can you get it so I can see what's going on on the screen, Cupboard Monkey? Oh, like you need to know. But uh, we're here with the Cupboard Monkey as well, and of course you will have also seen the Monkey See, Monkey Build series that we just started, and the Cupboard Monkey didn't take my advice and do a clickbaity thumbnail and title, so uh, I think a lot of people may have overlooked that. But we're going to sort that out for the second one in the series, which is going to build something Star Wars related. I might be building a TIE fighter. Mmm, yes. <laughs> so, uh, what about a bow tie fighter? No. Mm. So uh, we've got quite a few people in. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as well if you haven't already done so. Um, but it's really important. Show your love for the channel. Share us on social media. And let's get as many people as we can on here. Because we've got... Uh, I, I actually drove all the way to Sheffield today to pick these up. So suited, booted, masked up and everything. Um, it's about... Uh, I think it's about a hundred and uh, how many miles did I do? A hundred and seventy miles or something. It's a long way round trip from here to Sheffield and back, but I did that to make sure that we had all six terriers and that they didn't get uh, shaken up in transit. So um, we've got. Uh, let's have a look. Who have we got in the uh, in the stream? I'm probably going to butcher this. So uh, where's it gone? Oh, oh my goodness! Yes, Varton de Morning says good fall. Good oh, evening. God, God fall. Means good evening. Yes. Yes, yes, I knew that. Ben Tullet, big hello to you. Um, Southern Train Girl, J94, Theo Me, Bangotty Junction, Carl Braun, Josh's Train Room, King Fox Junction, Simon Trains, MRS, The Angels Share, Whiskey Distillery, OO Gauge Layout, uh, Philip Page, Arthur Humphreys. Uh, so we have got um, loads of people in Teddy Edward, uh, Jim, Robin Sil. Watching him, I know it's looking good. Uh, let's see the more the merrier. Let's see how many people can Jim, get in. Uh, what if we get to four hundred? Does that mean I can have pizza? We've already eaten. We had. I past, didn't say tonight. We had past the bed. I didn't say bed. tonight. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Get four hundred <laughs> people in. 400 uh, concurrent, not 400 views. We pass Aww. that every every Monday. But also, of course, lockdown is slowly ratcheting in all around the globe, but certainly in the UK. So the Monday Club is your point of contact for a bit of social interaction with like-minded people. And never has this been more important, I have to say. So um, it's... What are you doing? You're, you're messing I'm about with the... the Facebook... So I can get a picture that I sent to you oh, right, to show okay. people what we're planning. Righty. Oh, so uh, also I'd like to show up. Um, uh, I really need to be able to see what I'm doing on the screen because I'm not quite sure. We've got two new buttons. Mm, okay, yes, we have. Button. So this. Oh, wrong one. So um, no. Come on. Have you broken it? 
I have broken the Elgato streaming device and... So why don't we just go for this one? Will the sound be playing? I would expect it would be. I will turn this uh, up on here just to make sure. There we go. <laughs> so uh, what you're hearing at the moment is uh, the uh, Rails of Sheffield sound fitted Box Hill. Uh, and for some reason that's... Oh, is that all we get of it then? No, because you tap the button so much that it's now gone to the <laughs> other video. You break things a lot, don't you? So are we having a look at the uh, uh, now what apparently, we call the howl around? Yeah, what we're now doing is we're getting a good close look. This is the Western Cleveland and Portishead Railway number four. This is actually, I think this is one of the potential sleeper hits because I really like this livery. Now, it has been done before with the old uh, Hornby Daypole, uh, ex Daypole Terrier, the really old one from, I think, late 1980s, maybe early 1990s. Mm. So, um, has appeared before, but uh, hasn't appeared in a new, modern, fully tooled up Terrier until now. Now, the Great Western Rail one, I think it's number six. Uh, I wasn't able to borrow one of these because they're selling incredibly well and Rails couldn't spare one because he said all the ones that they physically had to hand were already assigned to people's orders. So, um, yeah, we agreed that it would be wrong to kind of pinch somebody's order for a week and leave them hanging. So we haven't got the Great Western Railway one, but the Box Hill one, I have to say, is my favourite. Now, the Cupboard Monkey is going to be monitoring the uh, yes, the comments. Yes, we've got an excellent question here from Flymo Chairman 1. Uh -huh. Who let the dogs out? Woof, woof, woof. Hold on. And it's... I have to say, the sound-fitted version has really impressed me. Now, um, I'm somebody who's been quite used to things like TTS sound chips and a bit samey, boring they are. But this sound chip, it's synced to the speed and the motion, so the chuffing rate is fully synced up. Um, it's got so many little bits and pieces. You can play multiple sounds, not just two sounds, but multiple sounds at the same time. Um, I also really like, if I press F4, um, what that actually does is it starts the coal shoveling effect and also you get the firebox flicker. So the firebox flicker is effectively... I noticed that when I was uh, putting together your videos. Yeah, so the firebox only flickers when you hear the uh, fireman shoveling coal, which is exactly how it would be. Um, can I just say it can't be upright, it'll hit the bridge. No, not not giving uh, away anything, but... Uh, right, um... Uh, I'm going to make an executive decision and skip to up to date because the cupboard monkey is busy playing about um, uh, instead of monitoring the um, uh -huh. uh, the stream. Actually, we've got an interesting one here from mm. Manfrey, 1956. Distances in England are so different. A 170 mile round trip could be a daily commute or a nearby city in Texas. Yeah. He used to have in, a daily commute of a 208 mile round trip. In America, people are much more used to driving huge distances distances but in the UK that's much more unusual yeah I actually I didn't bother me I mean you're looking at somebody who four days a week um, in my day job can regularly do anywhere up to four to five hundred miles in a day um, so I'm quite used to driving long distances I probably get on quite well going to America and driving because um, it doesn't bother me, I'm used to it. But to a lot of people in the UK, even driving 20 or 30 miles can, can be considered a long way. Um, evening to everybody. Um, retired Elio says the speaker must be small. It is. It's, it kind of reminds me of the iPhone type speakers. It really is quite tiny. And now we've got the, uh, the camera next to the thingamajig. Turntable. Yeah, turn. That's the word. Let me turn the shoveling off. So, uh, come on, Mr. Fireman, you stop shoveling. So, what I've done is I've paired up. That's the Southern and the Isle of Wight. Now, the Isle of Wight one, I hadn't realised this. The bunker is completely different, and they've correctly tooled this 
for the expanded larger bunker. So you see the two there, you've got a lovely comparison. The southern one has the toolbox, but on the Isle of Wight one, the toolbox is removed and replaced by a, um, a full bunker extension. Now there's the Western Cleveland and Portishead Railway number four, and also the Southeastern and Chatham Railway number 751. That is an exquisite livery. And I know that uh, when I spoke to Oliver at Rails, uh, I got the impression that that was a personal favorite of his <laughs> because it really does look good. And when we do the video review, um, we're going to film that tomorrow. It'll go out later this week. Uh, one of the things I actually want to do is compare um, the ones where I've got a like for like. So I've got a like for like here at the moment at the Southeastern and Chat uh, Chatham Railway and also Brighton in Improved Engine Green. So I'm going to pay close attention to those just to kind of tally what the, the actual detail differences are between the Hornby and the Rails. Now the Rails one, if you go for the um, the, the standard DC um, version, that I think it's £110. So that compares to, it's about £85 we're looking at for the latest release of the Hornby one. So there is a premium, um, but uh, when you see the exact same identity models side by side, it is actually quite noticeable. And I will go into some of these detail differences. Now, on the screen now, you'd probably be wondering, I don't remember that one listed in the most recent releases. That's actually my personal Terrier. Um, and that is from uh, the first batch that were released. Um, so I've added that in with the Rails one. So it's got a little bit of company. You can see there, that's all of the Rails ones that I've got to hand. Um, the firebox glows are flickering. Uh, when you've got them on DCC, uh, that turns on and off on a DCC only chip on F1, if you buy that fitted from Rails. Right. Um, it's now going back to round to the start. Do you want to jump to another camera? Oh, is it? Oh, so it just loops. Yeah. Right. Let's let's go back and we'll properly we'll want listen to, turn to off the th sound here. Then, otherwise, it'll get in the way. Okay. Right. I'm going to turn the sound off of the terrier that's going round, and we're going to. There we are. So this will go through all the different sound options. So I'm going to try not to talk too much. I'm just listening to make sure that goes through. Mm. <laughs> Can you hear it? So um, this is kind of a little bit of a cleaner sound. And I was able to run through. So oh, I think I went through all of the functions up to something like F17, just seeing what was there. And there actually are a lot of different sound functions. And Shackleton says, Jenny, not talking. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, A.D. Pullen. The other great news from Rails of Sheffield is the Caledonian Railway 812 painted samples look fantastic. And the price is actually... A lot of people were getting a bit worried because it kept saying TBC to be confirmed. And then now are quoting prices that are definitely under the 200 mark. And actually, um, if you're wanting the uh, the BR versions, they are actually um, more than just a smidgen under. And um, also, if you want to actually buy it, we've got a link in the uh, yes. description, haven't we? Um, uh, th there is a link in the description box, and that will take you through to the Rails of Sheffield site, to the actual page where you can order up and buy your own terrier at the moment the sound fitted versions aren't listed they are still forthcoming and again a big big thank you to rails of sheffield who expediated one from the factory so the the box sill that's here is a proper bona fide from daypole sound fitted one that they've expediated um, so that i can demonstrate this to you guys um, so a big big thank you to that but at the moment it's the DC and DCC fitted versions that are available. If you buy through that link in the description box, it does not cost a single penny more, but it does help out the channel an awful lot. Um, a lot of people liking the firebox effect. 
And it's yeah, a nice effect. It's something that we started to see come through on things. Um, I first saw, actually, I think it's the O-Gage Terrier uh, was the first loco I saw with the firebox flicker effect. And it is really nice to actually see some of these auxiliary functions getting a use on steam outline locomotives. We're quite used to on uh, diesels, you know, we've got the different lighting functions on some, like for example, the Daypole class 121 and 122 rail cars. There's about four or five different lighting functions. So it's a really nice way on a steam loco of making use of some of that DCC functionality. And of course, the other um, USP unique selling point for the uh, rails of Sheffield Terrier is that it natively supports sound. Now I've heard some people say that the Hornby one, yes you can sound fit them, but, and there is a huge but here, uh, it is incredibly challenging, you, you are very very restricted on what you can use and space is so tight that actually I struggled even just doing a standard DCC fit. So. If you want to go the sound route, for me there's no contest. You can um, get the sound version direct from Rails. Is that just showing a stationary image? or Oh no, it is sort of like moving around. But we're going to move away from that now. So we're going to go back to the, um, uh, the main layout. And I've just we've got a, a dead spot down here on the track, which uh, it's just stopping on. Um, I'm just making sure we haven't uh, misplaced any trains. Where is... Oh, it's over there. So I'm going to turn Box Hill back on. Uh, as I said to you before, I'm really, really grateful for the loan of these models and particularly the sound one. And actually the sound has really impressed me. It does sound like a proper terrier. And as you heard in that little video snippet, there's a lot of really great um, additions like that flange squeal as it, uh, uh, well, the, the brake block squeal as it comes to a halt that is just automatically happens. Um, some of the other sounds as well, when you start it moving, it kind of goes through a cycle. Uh, a few people are saying that it sounds a little tinny. And uh, Flam uh, sorry, Leslie Gilpin is saying uh, he suspects YouTube is compressing the sound. Yes. I, yeah. can I can guarantee that it doesn't sound tinny when you actually hear it. Yeah, so we're hearing it go around. It does have a small speaker, but it's a bit like, you know, when you have an iPhone and you think, well, how can that speaker give you a good sound quality? But actually an iPhone speaker does. And the speaker itself looks like that kind of an idea. Yeah. And um, one of the other things as well is that the locomotives come with a pre-fitted speaker. Now, um, just to address something that I have seen posted about, um, I know that there was a few issues <laughs> with the speaker. Um, so what Daypol are doing is obviously the sound fitted version, the speaker is fitted hunky dory. The DC uh, only ones, the speaker is fitted as they've come from the factory in China. But if you get the DCC fitted but non-sound version, the speaker gets taken out. It comes in the box, so you can fit it at a later date. But what I would suggest is if you want to fit your own sound file DCC um, decoder, then get the DC only one and just be very careful when you're putting the body back on and uh, to make sure that you don't um, misalign the speaker because that's been one of the issues. So um, just putting that out there. <clears throat> You're laughing away like there's something you want to say. Yes, uh, Sid Vicious says it'll cost £1,120 to get the entire fleet. Hello, Santa! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, don't forget, if you get them through that link that's in the description box down below, doesn't cost you a penny more, but uh, it keeps me in Rails' as good books and it does help out the channel an awful lot. And uh, very much it's, uh, I think we've got a dead spot down there. Uh, and it also, um, you know, it's, um, it justifies Rails lending me all these things if I can prove the actual traffic. Uh, but we've got Chocolate Merino and oh my word, George Botterini has just donated uh, $9.99. That is amazing. Thank you ever so much, George. You are incredibly generous. Um, so donated oh, that through so Super Chat. And thank you ever so much for that. And of course, 
uh, all donations to the channel uh, they go a, a huge way to be able to keep us doing all of this because you know <laughs> at the end they of the Jenny in socks um, and that's it I think a lot of people don't understand uh, what goes on behind the scenes and things like you know so for example today um, yes I've had a loan of the six terriers they've not been given to me I know but sometimes people think oh you've just been given six terriers no I haven't they're on loan they've got to go back um, but I, you know, I, I use like thirty quids worth of petrol and also, for the for the for doing that. My day as well. Yes, you and yeah, there's a lot of time this. goes into these. So thank you ever so much, George. Yeah, uh, that really does go a huge way. It really does, and Jenny definitely appreciates it. Mm. And so do I. Uh, Garthian says Tardis on the flat wagon behind LBSC Terrier. So yes, absolutely. Uh, let me just. I want to make sure, can I make sure that that doesn't... I've got a troublesome bit of track down there. There we are, it's going... No, no, no. No, it's that point, is it? You've been spraying glue again, haven't you? No, it's just... You've been messing about. I think the track's a bit dirty as well, so... Um... Get your rubber out and clean it. Mmm. I mean, it's getting warm up here. Do you think it's warm? I'm thinking we might need some uh, air conditioning. Is this your way of telling me that I have to leave? No, 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 no. No, you leave. You're sending me on a quest. An epic quest. No, my air conditioning is not you leaving. Um, we can we can start start. Can we change the uh, angle for the cameras? Because it's been stuck on that one a while. Well, give people a, a nice glimpse of other things. Yeah, ooh. there we go. Oh, that's nice. Actually, we don't we don't need you to disappear just yet. We've got air conditioning going on down here. That's nice. Right. Um, so, uh, what else have we got? Uh, a lot of people liking the LBSC Improved Engine Green. Now, if anybody's wondering, it's like that's not green. Uh, yeah, it's an ochre colour. It's kind of like a yellowy, greeny brown. Um, and Stroudley was rumoured to be colour blind, and so th this whole story um, came together. Um, he actually thought they were green. I don't think that's true, but uh, improved engine green is what they get called. Uh, and definitely, yes, uh, uh, improved engine green is, is my favourite as well. Kelly Ashford asks, uh, only four terriers are running. Why isn't the one up top running? Um, it is. It's these uh, ones. These ones. Um, there's actually. Uh, I can see five. Four, f six. There are six terriers running. Um, so the oh, there's one behind me as well. Yeah. Mm. This is. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to get number forty, and I am going <laughs> to. Everyone noticed the floating tardis across the camera. It's a massive, uh, massive budget spent on these special effects. I mean. Look at that. That's, you'd never believe how we did that. Hmm. Right, anyway. So, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I've just realised that uh, number 40, uh, I've got two number 40s because I've got two Brightons here. <laughs> Is that why? That's why that one just suddenly um, sped off. So I'm right. going gonna, gonna to put... Yeah, but stopped again. About... Oh, strange. We've got them both on the same command haven't you yeah i'm gonna um chase one it, off now i'm gonna have one go around and chase it so let's see now at some point we'll see a little trio of terriers on the upper level i'm just uh come on are you gonna oh yes oh no ooh, right, ooh, right. um they kind of Yes, yes. Derailed. Okay, you... you, you right. I've taken over now. Hello there. Now it's the Cupboard Monkey Show, and I'm going to have station intervention. Jenny, you have too many terriers. Said nobody ever. <laughs> you need help. You need help, woman. What are you doing? All, the, all these terriers. What is this? Uh, Jenny's dog's home? Come on. Yeah, something like that. I'm not very good at ad-lib comedy, you know. It's yeah. just one of those things. I'm more akin to uh, making sarc sarcastic comments. Uh, mm -hmm. So what have we got from the comments here? Um, yes, uh, Richard Swiderski says, Got to hand the special effects to Zoe. Thank you very much. I did notice what you did there with your puns. Hand the special effects, yes. <laughs> Who needs a green screen, says John. 
everyone says it looks like Toria racing and the sounds are great so yeah I think this uh, sound chip you it's really spot on I, I've been very impressed by it it's changed the I didn't notice that it was uh, that the sound was uh, essentially uh, linked to uh, the the way it's moving, but now you've mentioned it, that is yeah, really it, good. It's, it's a like, nice touch. Uh, Do you want to be back in your chair? Is um, that why you're hovering over me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, probably as well because you can't you can't just string this together. You like, no, I don't uh, know what I'm choo, talking about. Choo, My name's Cupboard Monkey, and I like choo choo chains. Where's the grunk? Right. Um, Grunks so, are the only ones I know. Mm, yes, Gronk it up, baby. Um, which, incidentally, as well, the Gronk it up T-shirt is available through Teespring through the merch as well uh, from the Gronk Fest. There is or is actually a Terrier Fest T-shirt in the works. However, um, it's kind of I not didn't get it quite. finished. Yes, um, the line art is pretty much done. Mm. The rest right. isn't. Uh, John Slade asks, Zoe, can I have your email address? Got a URL for you. This is Zoe for... at zoerobinson.com. Yeah, so it's Zoe spelt the Greek way, which is Z-O-E. So um, there's no erroneous Ys on the end there. And uh, uh, basically send us the URL to link to your own videos. We've got some left from last week, so we if weren't you, able to show them. Yeah. Uh, if because... you jump to the browser, they'll be able to... What have you done? Oh, something's gone and derailed. Oh, goodness. This is this is what I've got so far now that we're seeing it. Of the um the thingamajig, the uh, the new t shirt for the for the train fest, uh, the the terrier fest even. Mm. <laughs> Garthian says you need to do a Garrett t shirt as well. The Garrett's so big <laughs> I'd I'd need like two t shirts, it would be XL only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we're we're working on the the line art still, and then it'll get coloured, and we'll we'll have a, a nice T-shirt for Terrier Fest. But we do still have the Gronk it up, so you can jump back to whatever you were doing oh, now, Jen. Uh, yeah, I was buttons. I was messing about with uh, Terriers. Okay, well there we are. But um, right, so I'm just going to put that one back there. Um, I think my little experiment to have loads of Terriers running on the upper one just ended up in uh, them derailing. <laughs> Naive Gage says that if Zoe's in the chair, does that mean Jenny's making an apple crumble? Um, no, no. I, we, we've <laughs> we've got the dime dime bar thing. We did, yes. And uh, I've got an interesting question here from Somerset Andy. Jenny, how many is a guess? Uh, how many locomotives would you say you've got? Um, I know how many I've got DCC fitted, and these are my locomotives, not including the ones that have been loaned today very kindly by Rails of Sheffield. Uh, 215 DCC fitted. There are more on top of that, um, but I do know because I was looking at the uh, actual uh, file where I list all of the, the DCC numbers for my uh, locomotives, and uh, that was up to uh, 215. So, um, yeah, I need more. Oh, this is an interesting question from Andrew Murphy. What is easier for newbies, N scale or HO scale? I would say HO scale. Um, I think the larger the scale, the easier it is to do. Certainly, as you get older, you'll probably find, like me, that your eyesight isn't as good and as uh, how it doesn't have the finesse um, that uh, it uh, used to. So the end result is that you struggle to see things. So uh, I would say HO. Um, this point over here is getting bloomin' annoying. So I'm going to see if this will go around the other way. Basically, there's a dead spot on the point. At some point, I will solder in a dropper, and that will sort the problem. Um, but at the moment, it does appear that as though it's actually trying to uh, uh, get all of the electrical continuity for the point just through the switchblade rail. So That doesn't sound good. Yeah, oh, uh, that's going round that way, actually. Yeah, so that's good. Um, so don't forget to share the stream as well and like to if you haven't already liked the stream do tickle that like button and uh, as i said before if you're looking to get your own rails of sheffield terrier we've got a link in the description box down below gosh the comments are coming in incredibly yes, fast uh, got an interesting one from tim uh, tim jd droud saying what's the locomotive that's going up and down on the shunt 
Oh, that is actually a Hornby Class 01. Now, this is fitted with the DCC Concepts Zen Black Buddha chip. Now, if anybody's seen the Zen Black Buddha chip, I did show one when I did the review of the Zen Black range and didn't, during that video, fit it to anything. They're intended for larger things like LGB Garden Railway Locos, uh, Gauge 1, that kind of thing. But I've actually managed to fit it into a double O locomotive and it includes three one farad uh, capacitors on an inbuilt stay alive and believe me when you pick it up it keeps running for something like 15 to 20 seconds um, it is massively over specced for a double O locomotive but it means that that locomotive will never ever stall even on the world's worst laid uh, track with Huge electrical conductivity issues, dirty track, will not phase that locomotive. But at the moment, it's making use of the ABC shuttle feature that all of the Zen Black decoders come with from DCC Concepts. We've got a, a good guess here. Chris Hales, Heritage Railway says TARDIS is near Um <laughs> It's a good guess, but the... it's not right. Uh, it, yeah, oh, what's that? Is they the guy in catchphrase? It's good guess, but it's not right. Yeah. Oh no, he's saying it's good, but it's not right. And it's not right because mm. it's in my hand. Yes. <laughs> um. Right. Um. Well, do, 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 do. Um. I'm just having a look through the messages. Right. Um, um, Patrick says he can't tickle you, so can you do the tickling, please? <laughs> oh, uh, no. No, we're not going have... to go down that arms race because I will lose. Yes, because uh, I have a very good poker face. Even though I am more ticklish than she is, I crack a later. Right. Um, Peter Watson says, Jenny, do you have a Brighton Bell unit? I do not, actually. The Class 403. I believe Hornby did that in both the original Pullman livery and also the later BR Blue Grey. Um, I believe that they actually lasted through into the 1970s, uh, but I'm um, not sure till when, but certainly they got a tops designation of Class 403. Right, um, right. So, Jen, I've got a question about these Turians. Yes. You're, you're a big Turrier fan. If you could only have one Turrier, mm -hmm. which would it be? Box Hill with sound. That that has really impressed me. Now I picked them up. Um, I, I picked them up about eleven o'clock this morning. Got them back here for maybe about uh, two o'clock. Uh, got them on the track by three o'clock, and, and filmed... was in love with them by three or five. Uh, yeah, uh, really impressed. And yeah, I. I yeah, I went in with a, a very open mind. Um, I would already had a Rails Day Terrier, so I knew that there were a lot of superior detail aspects to it. Um, but the improved engine green, uh, the, the, kind of the LBSC Ochre livery, which you'll all remember from Thomas the Tank Engine, because of course Stepney was presented in that livery. Um, the, the Rails version, that light livery, is the Achilles heel of the Hornby uh, um, model and it really does show you where the differences are on the rails one and um, but it's also a very beautiful livery anyway and you know I've got Leadenhall I've got uh, Brighton um, and now we've also got a second Brighton here and uh, Box Hill um, I've also got the um, Brighton Works loco as well which is in a similar livery uh, right. I'm going to pop off. I'll be back. Okay. Um, Gary Lewis says, Hi Jenny, I have a liking for the Portishead, Clevedon and Western GWR Terrier to join my loco fleet. Uh, definitely, that is proving quite popular. I think not least because uh, even though Hornby's been um, really putting out a lot of different versions of the Terrier, they did get to the market about a year quicker. Um, the Great Western Railway and the Western Cleveland and Portishead Railway uh, liveries are two which they haven't actually visited yet. So they are proving very, very popular. Now, we uh, to the uh, point where actually Rails weren't able to lend me the Great Western Railway livery one because they said it's been so popular that all the ones that they had to hand in the shop 
were already um, sold. Now there are more coming through, so don't worry about that. If you uh, put your order in, they will come. And uh, uh, but it has proven a very, very popular livery. But actually, the Western Cleveland Portishead Railway one. Where, where's it gone? Um, uh, it's, it's the number three in line on the front of. Let me change angle and you'll see it just coming round the corner at the top end uh we've got the southeastern and chatham railway liveried loco then we've got the isle of wight southern railway livery that's number nine and then we've got western cleveland and portishead railways the number three um in that trio and um i'm going to actually turn on the flickering fire glow. i'm not quite sure how visible that's going to be from a distance um, but certainly I do like that WC and PR livery. It really is nice. But you know, I'm liking them all. Um, I haven't seen a livery on a terrier which doesn't suit it. And the closest to that is probably the Kentonese Sussex Railway Blue. Not my favourite livery. You know, it, it's, it's all right. But um, I think the terrier really does suit a lot of the other liveries. Um, Right. Um, oh, gosh. Lots and lots of people are um, uh, leaving comments. Right. Um, right. Um, Duchess Feast to right. John Slade says Duchess Feast. Um, I've got three Duchesses up there, but... None of you can see them, um, so I'm not sure where to say Duchess Feast. Um, there's a single Duchess there behind me. Um, hmm. But I'm um, not sure where, where you're looking for on that. Um, Ham Shackleton says, someone has woken the trolls up. Um, yeah, one of them was crying on uh, Facebook earlier on. Um, what, well... <laughs> What they don't understand is the amount of behind the scenes work that goes into YouTube videos. You can't just um, film five minutes, upload five minutes and expect everybody to come and watch it. At the end of the day, um, for every, probably every minute of footage that you see on screen has taken 20 to 30 minutes of hard work, including research, um, setup. Uh, and then the editing process does take a long time and um, you know people getting jealous about sponsorship is uh, green eye for the jealous guy I guess but uh, I think actually it's you know, they always say that um, when I when I worked for a guy called Chris Yates in aviation journalism he always used to say that if we weren't getting death threats then we weren't getting close enough to the truth um so um there we go right um clive cobalt says hi jenny how many class 85 electric locomotives do you have just the one um all ah, right fly my channel one says no jenny duchess feast to right is what i think was meant right i'm with you now definitely um james pet says gosh yes a few months ago i spent all day filming an eight minute sequence and absolutely and anybody who actually does um high quality youtube videos actually understands that there is a lot of work that you don't see behind the scenes you know you've got to put a lot of time in to make a video that just you know a 10 minute video can take all day or indeed several days it's just how it how it is John Slade says, yes, I know. I now know just how hard and time consuming making videos are. Definitely. Uh, video production is almost a thankless task. Um, and it's why it gets irritating when people just assume that everything comes handed on a plate. Um, Andrew Murphy says, I use Jenny videos when I am down and need lift up. So, so, um, so I... Benga all Jenny videos and daydream of trains in the past. Oh, I'm really glad uh, that I'm, I'm um, helpful in that respect. Um, and it has to be said at the moment, um, there's a lot of people who may be uh, socially isolated because of COVID and never has there been 
a more necessary time for the community to pull together. And one of the things that we want to try and do is uh, to kind of build the community spirit. So there's a lot of like-minded people in the chat who follow the Men Jenny Monday Club that subscribe to my channel. And I think it'd be great if people try and talk with each other as well. Get to know people, especially if you're feeling isolated, you know, maybe you're stuck at home, having to socially isolate because of uh, um, you know, health reasons or otherwise, and just needing that human interaction. There's a great pool of people here who all share a common interest in model railways. And I think it's a great way of getting to know people that you can socially interact with That's online. That's we're going to start the Monday Club, Club on Facebook. Yeah, so we're going to try and start, um, it, it, it will be a group rather than a page. We would have turned the page into a group, except it turns out you can't. Excuse me, so what we're going to do is start the Jenny Monday Club group. And it'll mean that you can then actually start topics talk um, in the, the group uh, in topics and more importantly get to know other like-minded people such that you know you can build a, a friendship relationship with people um, you know go away Skype them zoom zoom them um, WhatsApp them and you know build up that shared social interaction over the internet I think that's ever so important in these um, socially um, weird times that we are living through. Uh, Wan Gok says, gardening leave with Jenny. <laughs> um, Kelly Ashford says, I hope normal steamy runny sessions will return on this channel. I really miss them. Well, I'm sorry, what we've got, uh, we've got lots and lots of steam trains running. I mean, this is all steam all They're the all time. They're all steamy wheelies. Yeah, I even uh, went above and beyond and fitted that uh, Thompson 01 with a DCC decoder that is so not suited to it um, just so that it would run on the shuttle um, so that we I would actually then have a steam locomotive that would do the ABC shuttle so that everything was steam so um, that Thompson 01 is for you Kelly um, uh, Paul Higgins says Jenny what is the best point work for terriers to go over please it's the same as with um, all model locomotives, really. Electrofrog points, if wired up uh, with the uh, polarity uh, switch, so you've got a constant live, correct polarity feed to the frog and the switch rails, that is good for terriers. Um, they are short wheelbase, but it's also, you know, it, it's a good habit to get into um, for. Uh, trouble free running. They will, of course, go over insole frog points, and there are a lot of insole frog points up here because I used a lot of second hand points to keep the costs down. I just buy job lots off eBay, um, and they will handle them. But if you want to give them that extra uh, little push, then um, you can can do it that way. Now, um, it just really occurs to me. I don't now, that's a very interesting statement we've got here from DL Warren. I always felt like I was in Ireland being a railway enthusiast when I was in my early teens. YouTube proved that proved it was otherwise. Now I'm 22 and driving. I've travelled up and down the UK meeting others. Very yeah. much. I always said, sorry, that's going to be very loud because the computer's right by the microphone. Yes, microphone. sorry about that. I couldn't turn the sound off because <laughs> it's a modern laptop without a volume knob. I couldn't turn the sound off until it had turned on. Oh, sound <laughs> controlled in software. So, oh, oh um, will that will that mouse pointer be on other people's feed or what not? What mouse pointer? That no. one. Oh, fair why, enough. Why would your mouse pointer be on their computer? I don't know. I don't know. Are you know. trying to control everyone through your mind? Very much. Gunnar Daniel says, do you have any BR9F? No, I still don't. Um, I do kind of fancy one of the Backman ones. I have looked at the Hornby ones, and I'm afraid I wasn't won over. You know, they're good in their own way, good value for money, um, but they're more towards the railroad end of the scale. Um, so I must admit that I am waiting for Backman to bring their 9F back into production. Bring it back, bring it back. Um, Shanghai264359 says, It took me an afternoon and an evening to make my 83... Um, 83 second terrier film for terrier fest definitely and it's what, what i was saying oh, to everybody it, takes ages. it does yeah and that that's the thing that uh, 
um, people who, um, who whine and moan, and there's a small minority. Uh, we, won't, don't, we won't name names. Yeah, but they, they don't understand that actually, if you want to make quality videos, you have to put a lot of time and effort in. Yep. So, today's beverage of choice is brought to you by Diet Coca-Cola. So, um, oh, there you are. I shall um, have that at all. Yes, you will. Right, we've got 329 people in. We're really struggling to get up to that 400. So don't forget to share the stream. Let other people know that we're on. Everybody's welcome. And this is your antidote to Lockdown Blues. The Jenny Monday Club. Two hours of great social interaction with like-minded people. So let everybody know that we're here and we are accepting of everybody. And also, I, well, I am reminded... I'm not sure we are accepting of everyone. If uh, Hitler turned up, we'd probably tell him to leave. Uh, we'd probably be quite surprised he was still about. But yeah, also, but we'd tell him to leave as well. Very much. Uh, Simon Trent, MRS, Jenny Monday Club Facebook group sounds a great idea. I'm working on um, it now. I definitely... Oh, Simon Trent, MRS has found the TARDIS in the coal hopper in the yard. Oh, that was ages ago, Jenny. Oh, right. oh, I'm well How behind. many minutes behind are you? Very, but also tickle the like button. And also at this point as well, I'd like to take an opportunity to say a big, big thank you to Ken Patterson on the What's Neat This Week podcast, because uh, he did mention us as well. You and do like his podcast. I do, I do. Um, He's very I, professional. Oh, God, yeah. I, 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 I watch his, um, the What's Neat This Week and it's like, I need to emulate this because this is real. This is how you do it properly, <laughs> and um, I love his setup, his now I've studio. Now Street Boys in my head. This is how you do it. Stop it! Stop it! But no, he's got a great setup, and actually, I, he did interview me um, a, couple, a few months ago now for What's Neat This Week, and it was a great honour to be on. And of course, afterwards, we just we chatted over um, over um, I think it was Zoom or Skype. And um, you know, we just you know, shot the breeze for a couple of hours. It was absolutely great and an honour to just talk with him off the record. But he showed me round his studio stroke model railroad room and it is absolutely epic. So a big, big thank you to Ken Patterson uh, name checking the Jenny Monday Club and the channel. So uh, also anybody who's uh, found us through Ken Patterson and the What's Neat This Week podcast crew, then welcome along. It's really great to see you. Uh, Logan Clary, pictures are the worst to edit. Copy, paste, fade in, fade out, repeat at least 10 times every time I do it on my fingers hurt. Mm. Um, Kelly Ashford says, I'm against Facebook. You don't know who's on the other end. I mean, there's a lot to... Not always me, honest. Yeah, but um, I think that's one of the problems in general with mm -hmm. the internet. So what does it say? Uh, on the internet where the, um, the men are women, the women are men, and the children are FBI agents or something, isn't no, it? No, uh, Facebook, like the internet, where men are real men, women are real men, and children are real men. Yeah. <laughs> Now I thought, and the children are FBI agents. That is true. Yeah, D.L. Warren. I always felt like I was an island being a railway enthusiast when Already I was in my... Already read that out, Jim. Oh, right, sorry. My goodness, you're not in there. Uh... Oh. You've um, got terriers on... That's what your problem. You've got terriers on the brain. Yeah, naive gauge. Today I inspected a 12 foot by 8 foot shed that I have been offered for free. Oh, boom. Oh, get in there. It needs a floor foundation, feels like a big project to take it down and rebuild it, but could be a place for a layout. Definitely, and never look a free shed in the floor, because actually it'd be a great starting point. But what I will say to you is think very carefully about two things. Insulation, to make it a much more pleasant environment, winter and summer, because you don't want it to get too hot. Sheds can get incredibly hot when the sun gets on them. But think about security. Not just doors and windows, but the actual slats on the side, because the crims will just rip their way through the wall. So what I recommend is extra strengthening and um, something like A-frame, solid A-frames under the roof that the roof bolts to, because it is otherwise possible, excuse me, to rip the roof off a shed, um, the kind that you just buy from the... Uh, uh, the um, I'm wanting to say a place that it has uh, the initials of B and Q, uh, but I'm not going to say the name. Um, 
Gwyn Reese Davies, big hello to you. Um, says, sorry I'm late. Don't worry, but uh, Gwyn, I know. Monday Clubber is never late. No, always fashionably on time. It is everybody else who is who is inconsiderately early. But Gwyn, I uh, hope you managed to get. I uh, know you were after the Great Western Railway Terrier. We were saying at the beginning, big big thank you to Rails of Sheffield for loaning the six uh, terriers that we're using today. Um, and we're going to be filming a full review of those. But I think actually. It's time for, let me press the button. So um, this we filmed slightly earlier on and uh, this was in preparation for the full review video that we're doing. Um, but we're gonna do the full um, look around of the um, different terriers that we got there. So that's the Western Cleveland and Portishead Railway number four. It's actually a surprisingly lovely livery. Um, it's not a livery that I would have ever considered for a terrier. But it's one that um, Rails are the first to bring out a terrier in this livery in the new generation. I know the old Hornby terrier, um, that one has been in this livery before. Um, it's surprisingly good. Now the Southern Railway one, this is the mainland Southern livery 2644. Again, this is a really sweet livery. I do like this and the livery application is really nicely done. You can see actually, when the light catches it, um, that shine, it looks like painted metal. It really is nice. Um, I'm just trying to think, I think the one that's after this, um, I really, I want to point something out when it comes, but the Westinghouse pump on there as well is another area I've spotted that is really nicely done. The glazing is all flush. The chimney caps, uh, some of them are painted on like that model, but uh, as you can see here on this, it's a turned metal chimney cap and it really does look good. Another point of note is on the Hornby version, the pipework is painted in like a kind of a brass paint, but on the, um, on the Rails Daypole one, it actually looks like metal. It's got that copper piping look to it and it really, they've got the colour absolutely perfect. The Southeastern and Chatham Railway livery is actually one of the favourites of quite a few people I've spoken to. I really like this livery. I am a sucker for Southeastern and Chatham Railway livery. Uh, now this is the Brighton model. Now um, things to point out on this. Um, uh, we've got the motion between the frames. It's not a working motion, but we actually do have something there, which is nice. Um, the lining as well, we've got full lining on the buffer shanks, which is omitted on the Hornby version, and the Brighton and the actual gold medal winning text as well is much, much clearer on this version. On the Hornby version, the uh, drop shadowing looks to be overdone, and it does look a little bit uh, splodgy as a result, um, but certainly on this version it is perfect. Now this is the Isle of Wight Terrier, so we've got number nine, uh, which I believe is a different identity to all the ones that Hornby have put out. But that bunker on the back, look at the bunker. It doesn't have the toolbox and it has the bunker rebuilt to go to right to the end of the frames as per the prototype, which I think is really, really nice. Now I'm gonna take an executive decision and uh, I've got to scroll to the, um, to the um, newest comments here, because I am well behind. And as I always say, if, you've asked a question and I've not answered you, it's not because I'm ignoring you, it's quite simply because they come in really, really fast. So ask your question again if I've not answered it. Uh, Sid Vicious says, Brighton would look fantastic, heavily weathered and greasy. I'm not sure how dirty in real life these would have become. They would have got some degree of dirt, but I think locomotives were generally kept a lot cleaner, especially as these were passenger locomotives on the front line when they wore this livery. Um, Andrew Murphy says, well, Jenny, love the knowledge that you have. Wish I could stay, but I'm going to a state sale and they got a lot of HO and N gauge up for sale. So I will catch you live, live again when you are on again. No worries, look, you take care and get yourself some bargains there. And don't forget that you can always watch on the catch up as well. So we've got 332 people in. Don't forget to tickle that like button and share the stream on social media. Let everybody else know that we are here with an exclusive 
first look and listen of the Box Hill a sound fitted terrier from Rails Depot, which what you can hear in the background. I'm going to be switching that off in a moment because I'm going to play the file that we actually recorded earlier on. And this is something that we've been trying to do um, so that I can better show you the models. It's very difficult on the live stream to get a good close up of models um, because the cameras that we use up here in the studio with the layout and don't have the focal length to focus really if you put the model right next to it it's just fuzzy as anything so uh, we've um, made use of the Elgato stream deck to be able to do this which is actually pretty great um, Ben Davis says J94 is coming back the four episodes air back to back on Channel 5 this Saturday um, oh so what what are we talking about there Right guys, I have just created the Monday Club uh, Facebook group and I am putting it into the chat in just a new moment. Um, King Fox Junction, uh, I've just spotted this question. Do you have to fit the firebox yourself or is it fitted already? No, it comes ready fitted. That is another one of the USP unique selling points of the Rails Day Pole Terrier. Is that that firebox flicker and if I... Um, uh, where are we now? So, um, actually, no, nobody's looking. <laughs> oh, hey, Dipple's animated sound and water towers coming back in November. Oh yes, another piece of news. Um, the uh, you may remember the uh, water towers. Some people had a few issues with it exploding, uh, which is most unfortunate. Um, but um, they've been reworked. So I think the problem was an electrolytic capacitor that was underrated for the voltage that they said that they could work on. Now, if you did have one and you did keep it and you ran it on a much lower voltage, then like mine, actually it should be all right. Um, mine still actually does work just fine. I run it on about three, four volts and not the 20 volts that it said in the paperwork you could run it at. And uh, uh, that does seem excessive. From volts. what I've heard from people, 10 volts is what the capacitor was actually rated at. So no wonder they popped. Um, so uh, that will be making a comeback. And it is actually a fine product. I like the play value. I enjoyed it actually. I thought it was a very nice thing. Yeah. I seem very good at missing the, the, the trains. I keep getting looking up and we've just basically got a, a screen with nothing happening. Right, um, yes, I saw this as well. Flymo Chairman once. Uh, I heard there'd been vandals at the Thangothan Railway. Sad and pointless. Unfortunately, um, it seems to be the bane of our society um, over the last 10 to 15 years of mindless idiots who think it's funny to go and break other people's stuff. And actually yeah. what we need is to find them and break them. And slap them. Mm. Uh, right. Um, Tim Wilmot. Hi, Jen. I'm watching this from my model railway. A brilliant, perfect place to, to, uh, to be to do this. It's one of those things, actually. I know a lot of people quite like to have me on in the background whilst they, they work on their modelling. Um, and I feel absolutely honoured that you guys um, tune in every Monday. Well, you know, there's no accounting for tests. Mm. <laughs> Tim J.D. Dow says, That's the trouble with preserved railways going back to the Thangothan. They are so easy to get to without security or fencing, coaches and wagons stuck in sidings. And I guess it's the um, the problem that they've got is that there's a lack of money. So um, paying for security is expensive. Uh, paying for um, like fences, for security guards, for camera equipment. It does cost money that they may not necessarily have. So they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, Brian Stone says, I remember seeing the Hailing Island Terrier running in BR days. I must have been nine or ten. And, and actually, yeah, sometimes some of those early childhood memories can be very long lasting. I myself, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm 41, pushing 42. So I don't remember, excuse me, any um, still running steam apart from at Donington Power Station, and um, I think Walkden Yard, I caught the last wisps of industrial steam. It's either Walkden Yard or Bickershaw Colliery, uh, thanks to my father. But hey, one of my childhood memories is actually very early 1980s, um, going uh, past uh, Onthwin 
uh, in South Wales, uh, where the line used to go a bit further to another uh, either open cast site or colliery. And I remember it was either a class three or a class four diesel shunter pootling along this length of windswept track alongside the road. And I just remember being fascinated by it. Uh, and that is actually um, uh, probably one of the memories that I will always treasure because um, it was just so magic to see this thing trundling along on its own close up. Um, J94 says, Ben Davis is on about the Yorkshire Steam Railway series being aired this Saturday on Channel 5. Right, that's brilliant. That does make sense. Uh, Garthian, Zoe, can you send the link for me, please, to my already face? Done. Oh, that's been done. No worries. Um, uh, we've had a lot of people join the Facebook group already. Brilliant. Uh, Wardle, great to see. Wardle Road, uh, great to see you. How are you doing? It says, Zoe, great kit build. And this is, of course, the new series that we've been trying out. Uh, we've done episode one of Monkey See, Monkey Build, with the Cupboard Monkey taking on the challenge of building a kit to prove that anybody can actually get a great result with these kits. Now, she didn't take my advice on the first episode of making the thumbnail nice and clickbaity and the title so really clickbaity. Um, so it struggled a bit on views, but uh, we're going to be coming back in with some more of those. And I'm going to actually talk to both Airfix and Wills and see if I can get an, a selection of kits for the Cupboard Monkey to take on. Jen says that it struggled on views. It got more views in a week than any other video I've made in a year. <laughs> a big hello to Zach. Hi to you. Uh, JJ Williams, 1984, echoing everybody's sentiments there. So sorry to hear about Mindless Idiots. Yeah. Uh, Mark Rice. Hi, Jen. What will go with the Terrier's coaches from 1800s or 1900s? Um, I, I think the one to look out for is definitely the Hatton's Project Genesis coaches. Uh, we uh, had the honour as well. Hatton's actually lent me the um, engineering prototypes of those. And they are exquisite. But I do think that the... Um, Southeastern and Chatham Railway ones, the Southern Railway ones, uh, the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway ones, uh, uh, London and South Western Railway ones as well. Those are four that will be eminently suitable to work with the Terriers um, over pretty much most, if not all, of the livery options that are currently available. So I think that's one to watch. I think they're due out either Q1 or Q2 next year. Um, Vatten Demonen says, I've just rewatched your <laughs> Loft Layout build series since the last Monday Club. Totally awesome. Thank you very much. And of course, don't forget as well that we're currently um, up to, we're, well, we're, we're currently filming part three. And just to show what actually goes into a good YouTube video when you were uh, actually, you know, to just to, to counter some of the criticism I've seen online about, oh, you know, oh, well, why, why is that, uh, this person getting sponsorship and views and stuff? Yeah, you know, I've taken four days worth of filming and I'm still not done to do part three of the 009 project build. So, you know, I do this so that it looks nice and slick and shows you all of the different steps in a way that's easy to follow. So we've got that layout build. We've demonstrated the J cloth and PVA method, which I know a lot of people, I've talked a lot about this because Alan Reynolds, um, big, big uh, champion of this method, put me onto using it as well. I've used it up here in the loft. But I've used it on the project build as well. And I know a lot of people have said, finally seeing that technique in action was very, very helpful. Uh, David Scott actually says that's the second preserved railway that has had coaches vandalised this last weekend. Almost um, as if someone's targeting them. I'm um, they're just um, uh, skanky scumbags, and skanky. you'll find that it'll only be a ha half a dozen, a handful of little skanky scrotes. And um, to be honest, they need to be punished in a way that actually is a real punishment. Sid Vicious says, I remember playing in Die Woodham's yard in the early 80s as a kid. And of course, there would have still been rusty steam locomotives there, including the Barry 10. Um, and in fact, the last steam locomotive to be cut up, I think there was two in the early 80s, which prompted a huge outcry that kind of galvanized people to save the rest. 
One of them was a 9F that got cut up. Uh, Kelly Ashwood says, why does this have to happen during lockdown? I don't know, because they... they more time. Yeah, and the thing is, these are the same, sc same scroty skanks who are spreading COVID around. We shouldn't, as a society, be accepting of this. What, you know, at the end of the day, we should come down exceptionally hard because they're out spreading COVID cooties around when the rest of us law-abiding people are helping to protect everybody. And on a lighter note, Paul Bottrell says, uh, Jenny, I just bought a J15-class loco at a bargain price. That is a good model. Mm. Which DCC sound decoder would you or anyone else recommend? Um, as far as I'm aware... Uh, Hornby have not done a TTS chip specifically for the J15, but what I would suggest is that possibly the J36 sound chip that they do would be a good starting point. Um, uh, I'm a big advocate of the TTS sound. Yes, it is a bit basic. I'm actually listening to that exclusive uh, Box Hill sound fitted terrier that you can hear chuffing away in the background. Let me just um, find it and... Uh, where are you now? Uh, that terrier, the sound in that has made me think, actually, you know, you, <laughs> TTS might be nice to get you started, but a proper, uh, decent uh, sound experience, it, it knocks the pants off the TTS, I have to be said. Andrew Johnson has an interesting question here. I mm -hmm. wonder if Zoe would tackle a Will's Craftsman engine shed kit after building enough of monkey see, monkey do kits. Now, here's the thing. I am definitely with Jenny. It's a nice building. It looks really, really good. Yeah, and this is, again, another... But, unlike what people who keep trolling you uh, on the comments section of that video say, that is not a kit. What it, you actually get with these Craftsman kits yeah. is a bill of parts. You get the parts, to scratch to build. scratch build so it's yeah it's not a kit yeah and, and actually it's one of my highest viewed kit building videos and uh, one of the trolls who shall remain nameless um um tried to make out like oh yeah why do you criticize it if you don't have the skill to build it Duh. don't say it like that you do have the skills to build it the problem was in that they're all I think purposefully, to some extent, missing the point of is that... Of course they are. It's not a kit. It's a bundle of parts. It's like, yeah. here you are. Here is everything you will need to make one of these from scratch. Yeah. But and I hate... Kit. I hate scratch building buildings. It is very tricky. You need a lot of skill and a lot of patience. And yes, I can build them. But I felt that the that particular kit, it should have been clearer on the packaging. And... Other little things, like they could have, you know, meet me halfway, they could have helped by making the drawings in there actually scale drawings. Oh, that would have been nice. They were just slightly undersized, but didn't, again, didn't make this didn't clear. Didn't make it clear. And that's the mm. thing. There were certain things where it's like, this might have been acceptable in the past when these kits were first designed, but mm. standards have come on. Um, but right, we've got 310 people in. Don't forget to tickle that like button and share the stream. Come on, let's let's get those 400 likes so that the cupboard monkey can bank a pizza credit, and I'll get her a, a, a pizza later in the week. Um, Is that order a pizza? Okay. No, no, no. Uh, Oliver HV says hi. Can I see a mammoth train? Unfortunately, they're not up here, so I can't show you them. I could grab it. No, don't, don't, don't. Okay. Oh, have we got Angus's trains in? A big hello to Angus's trains. It's great to see you. It's been a little while, and um, you, you're in in good time actually. And I've noticed a few weeks you've managed to join us just as we were finishing, which is a great well, we're still shame. Here now. But we are still here. Um, uh, JJ Williams, 1984, says Jenny for Prime Minister. Woohoo! Don't get us started. <laughs> um, she Alan already Reynolds got more said, votes than I did when she stood did just it. as a random person in an election. Yeah, I, I beat the Lib Dem candidate, actually, which was... Uh, so I didn't come last. You got more votes than I did when I was taking it seriously. <laughs> uh, right, Alan Reynolds says thanks, girls, for the mention. You're absolutely Very welcome. welcome. Um, Leslie Gilpin says, Clive wasn't the Ulster Express the last name steamed hauled train on BR. Um, Tim J.D. Dow, this is the last loco, to steam loco to be cut up at Di Williams Yard. Uh, yeah, 92185, I think it was, Jenny, uh, says Tim. 
Uh, Timothy Scott says, great layout. Thank you ever so much. Now, we're going to go back and um, as this is Terrier Fest, I'm going to give you a blast of, let me just turn Box Hill off. And we are going to go over to the video that we recorded uh -huh. earlier, giving you the full sound run through of the exclusive Rails Day Pole Terrier sound fitted box hill. Now the DC and DCC fitted versions of this are out. This is forthcoming. I don't have a precise release date, but we're talking within a few weeks, I believe. They're currently being fitted at the Day Pole factory and it's something that um, I'm really in the debt of Rails of Sheffield pulling out all the stops and managed to expedite one of these for loan from the factory so that I could demonstrate this. So really, really impressed by this. Uh, ben Tullet as well says, we also had some vandals recently set fire to a little halt shelter at the Country Park halt between Highley Station and Hampton Load Station. <laughs> There seems to be this culture of scrotage that's like, oh, we're only having a laugh. And I genuinely feel that the punishment is neither a deterrent nor an actual punishment because they keep doing it. And if it was a proper deterrent, they wouldn't do it. Garthian says, you choose to do a good chip, but it's over a hundred pounds if you get a speaker too. Yeah. DCC sound, except for the um, the Hornby TTS. I'm always a big advocate of the Hornby TTS because it does offer a great value for money starting point uh, at around the 38, 39 pound mark. Um, but other than that, you're usually looking at 100 to 110 pounds for the next step up. Um, so sound can be quite uh, expensive. Um, Paleo Potato says, I'm either planning a Northeastern Railway themed layout or an Isle of Wight themed layout. And um, definitely, actually, with the uh, the wealth of Isle of Wight Terriers coming through, then that is a very real proposition. <laughs> Certainly, the um, uh, Hatton's Project Genesis coaches will be a good thing to excuse me, help make that possible. Um, but if you want to go for the later period, the EFE range of the X London Underground, I think, or they class 413s or something, and they are available as well. Um, so they could be repainted into the Island Line colours or even the Network Southeast. I know 03179 has been done in Network Southeast toothpaste delivery, so there's another locomotive suitable. What? Wardle Road has been a bad influence. What's he done now? Try putting sound in a five inch gauge. It's not cheap. <laughs> no, no. What's your project? Um, my father's put sound in a one third scale Garrett. And it was live steam, so it kind of generated the sound itself. Yeah, I was going to say that. Oh. Uh, but also don't forget, if you really like any of these terriers that you're seeing here today, we've got an affiliate link in the description box down below. And um, that will take you to the Rails of Sheffield website to the appropriate page where you can order any of the uh, terriers that are currently available in stock. And it won't cost you anything extra, but it, it does help the channel out. Very much. Of course, it helps us to make the videos that you want to see here on the channel. And incidentally, in the background there on your screen, that's one of the um, South Eastern and Chatham Railway 3D printed vans, actually, I've just noticed, has wow. hoved into view. I had the Class 71 running shuttle whilst I was filming this. And um, the uh, new batch of the uh, South Eastern and Chatham Railway liveried versions, um, so the earlier brake and chassis detail version, there it goes, uh, they are also imminent, and I believe that there are a number unallocated. They've increased the order. They will go on sale uh, when they arrive, so you can't order them at the moment, but they will become available, so do keep your eyes peeled for them. Mountain 1956 says, Modern railroading has advanced like everything else in our lives. Uh, I'm astounded by today's equipment. So being in this hobby over the last 50 years. I loved Brass Locos as a kid. They looked good, but ran poorly. Mm. Brass Locos. Yeah, there's goodness. a lot of weight with them. But the trouble is, um, the ones I saw, like the Backman Brass Works, um, you had to paint them yourself, and often that was the make or break on a model. 
Um, Alice Neal. Uh, hi, Jen. Hoping to share some more of my unusual wagons. Yeah, I've been seeing some of those with uh, a great amount of interest, actually. I have to say, I am very impressed with some of those unusual brake wagons and engineers wagons that you've been doing. Really impressed. Do keep those coming. Interesting to see them all. Matthew Dunmo says, Jenny, want a DCC decoder? Would you recommend for the Rails Terrier? I have found the Daypole 18 Imperial decoder, but I'm not sure. Um, I would say that actually, I know that the DCC fitted from Rails, so you just get it, it just comes DCC fitted. Um, they have the Daypole Imperium Next 18 decoder, and it's set up so everything works just fine with the control of the firebox flicker on F1. Um, that I believe just it, you can buy it separately. The Daypole Imperium Next 18 chip is that chip if you want to fit it yourself. Um, my BR Black one that you're just about to see in the little box that I'm in trundle around here that is fitted with the Train O Matic uh, Next 18 decoder, which works absolutely fine. So, uh, you should also find a link to Train O Matic down in the description box somewhere, and you'll be able to order their Next 18 decoder from there, and that will also work just fine. Um, I suspect that. Um, there'd be other brands as well that you can use um, but generally speaking they've been designed to be 100% compatible with the Daypole Imperium so that is a simple easy uh, to get version and Trainomatic as well are perfectly compatible with those. Uh, we've got a nice safety question here from Tom Wilmot. Mm -hmm. Have you ever burnt yourself by touching the track on your model railway Jen? Not burnt myself, but I've got a little shock uh, quite often with DCC, especially when it's warm. So you've got a slight amount of surface sweat, which does contain salt, so it's very conductive. You can get, it's almost like touching an electric fence. It won't kill you, it won't burn you, it won't really harm you, but it's certainly a little bit of a, a shock. Kelly Ashford says they usually, uh, usually post an appeal of some sort asking for support from anyone who cares about the railway. They've done it dozens of time, times up to this year, but no one will come forward. I think there's a lot of insecurity at the moment financially because um, a lot of people with COVID don't quite know where their job is going to be in um, by Christmas. It's, it's very an uncertain issue. times um, and that, that could be part of it as well. But yes, it's certainly a very tough time for a lot of preserved lines, a lot of uh, museums, not just in the UK, but all around the world as well. Um, ben Tullett says, uh, Kelly, I would love to visit the Thangothlin Railway as they always tend to lend us a few locomotives to run on the Seven Valley Railway. And actually, the Thangothlin Railway is a beautiful railway. I'd love to see them extend that back to, um, is it Trevor, uh, where it rejoins the main line. Uh, I'd love to see them complete their main, main line collection, connection now that they've finished the Corwin extension. But I'm guessing that Covid's going to put all of these sort of plans really right back on the back burners. Clive um, Kobold says, Leslie, no, the Belfast Boat Express from Haysham Harbour to Manchester, Victoria was BR Black 545025, was the last steam hauled Belfast Boat Express in 1968. Uh, Brian, Sims, oops, uh, Brian Sims says, Hi, Jen, was looking for TTS sound chip, but all my trains six pin. How do I change from six to eight so I can fit sound? Um, you can hardwire them. That is possible. Um, I'm trying to think. I think DCC Concepts may sell a 8-pin to 6-pin adapter. They certainly sell an adapter that allows you to plug a 6-pin decoder into an 8-pin socket. So it may be worth checking with DCC Concepts if they have one that goes the other way. Failing that, it is possible to hardwire um, but obviously you need to be quite confident with the soldering ability on that. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Map the Dragon Railways. Could you could you give my friend Poshing Tono One a shout out, please? So, um, big shout out to Poshing Tono One. It's great to have you in. A big hello to you. Don't forget to tickle that like and share the stream as well. And if you haven't already done so do consider subscribing to the channel. 
Now we're going to go back and as this is terrier fest, I'm going to give you another blast of looking at some of the terriers that Rails of Sheffield has very kindly lent us for uh, the uh, terrier fest live stream. And um, I know that for a lot of people, it's you know it's been a big decision which terrier to go for. There's a lot on the market. And um, as you we were talking about the Isle of Wight earlier on, if you want to uh, model pre-Southern Railway Isle of Wight, one of the things I've been doing some research for some other videos. Um, yeah, again, another thing that goes on behind the scenes that you don't necessarily see, uh, but does add to videos. And the Isle of Wight Central livery on a terrier is one which I have been I have been talking with people about getting that made in model form. I'd love to see that in model form. It really is quite an eye-catching livery and one that, to the best of my knowledge, has never been done and ready to run in model form. But certainly if you're going to model Isle of Wight, I think that would be very much a tipping point for a lot of people for that very pretty pre-grouping livery. Big hello to Rule 1 Model Railways. Um, Ham Shackleton says, um, Game Hammer Classic Gaming. So this is for you, Cupboard Monkey. I don't think mm -hmm. you saw my comment earlier when Jenny switches to the close-up cam. Oh, the sound Jen, level drops a bit. I've turned the sound up a little bit. Oh, right. How far behind am I? <clears throat> About 25 minutes. Piccadilly Engage Model Railway by John Warner. Big hello to you. Uh, Crossways Point Junction says, Box Hill is the one I'm getting. It's really, really nice. Now, these six have been loaned. They have to go back. But I'm very tempted to say to Rails, oh, oh come on, just can I buy the, the box hill with sound? It's really nice. I like it. I really love it. But um, I also, um, out of these ones that they've uh, lent, I have to say that uh, the Southern Railway one is really nice. Um, and the Western Cleveland and Portishead Railway, uh, for me, that's a bit of a sleeper hit. It's not one which I, I would have naturally ever considered. But now I see it in the flesh. I really do quite like that one. And um, um, the Br Brighton, I already have the Hornby Brighton, so I wouldn't get the Rails one. But I have to say, if I was starting again for scratch, the Rails one does win hands down. Right. Um, Don gets Model Railway. Hello to you. Um, let's have a look. Um, Bish bash bosh. Um, oh yeah, Game Hammer Classic Gaming has shared the, the affiliate link that takes you straight to the appropriate page on Rails if you're interested in any of the Terriers. Uh, Zach Farmer says, loving the streams and videos. Good night from Zach. Well, a good night to you. If you're still there, I think I'm good probably... Good night, Zach. You're quite... Uh, 20 minutes ago, Jen. No, I'm not. It's tw <laughs> came in at 12 <laughs> minutes past. Garthian says, I've already ordered some sound-fitted Terriers. Excellent. Um, right. Uh, Naive Gage says, how much space you an end scale of the entire Isle of Wight take up? I think that even in end gauge, that would be huge. You're probably going to need something like the R101 hangar in Bedford to even stand a chance on that. Um, <clears throat> Simon Trains MRS says, the Class 71 is trying its best to photobomb. Yeah, I am well behind here. Um, Paleo Potato says, well, it's more freelance having five islands strung together, just an excuse to run a lot of pre-grouping southern stuff. Um, an excuse? Yeah. Uh, right, I'm going to... Let's have a look. Wardle Road says, I hope to get a terrier once I have my layout set up. You won't regret it, I have to say. Um, these terriers are lovely. I, I've become a big convert to terriers. And I have to say, actually, I didn't name check them earlier on. It actually slipped my mind. But up here, I have the original Daypole Terriers. And this is where we came from. And, you know, we looked at these. We went, oh, they're all right. They're a reasonable model. And uh, let's go to the roving cam. I don't think we've had that tonight just yet. So, I would stop, don't make that. It's like Saturday morning television, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So. Wow, it's it's different yeah so that is up up against the rails brighton and there's just no contest and when you look at all that that detail on the top is like My plastic fantastic but i do actually have four of these as well because i i did quite like the terriers 
uh, back in the day. And I, I must admit, I didn't think these were too bad. And then the new generation came out. Jamie, you're, on, you're double vision now. Do you want to switch to... Oh, well, yeah. Well, you could have pointed that at something interesting. Um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Water Road has a brilliant comment here. The world ends. The solar system is destroyed. Jenny asks, how far behind am I in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Andrew Johnson says... In South Africa, the vandals are not doing it for a laugh. The vandals who stole track, cantinery, and even whole station buildings are desperate. Much of the steel and copper is sold off for scrap. There was a railway up in the northeast. Somebody nicked something like a, a mile or, or two miles of actual track. Oh um, they dressed up as a, as a network rail crew and then had like all uh, heavy-duty equipment and just nicked the track. And they, they did get caught, but only after... Uh, a good chunk of track had gone missing. Right, I'm going to executive decision, scroll up to date. Um, big hello to Tony Northeastern. Somerset Andy as well. Woohoo! Great to see you as well. But, um, as you know, the, the Somerset Andy Class 47, again, always eternally grateful that you sent me that Class 47 and uh, plugged a, a glaring gap in my diesel fleet. Uh, so, uh, Jenny, do you have a favourite diesel and Steam Loco models? Steam Loco is still that Brighton um, H1 Atlantic in London, Brighton, in South Coast uh, yeah, go burnt for that. amber. Even over your garret. Yeah, I, I love that livery, and it's just mm. such a sleek locomotive. Diesel wise, I think it's uh, 07009. Uh, no, no, it's a Class oh. 7. 07009, the Helgen model. And I wasn't kidding when I put out that video reviewing it, saying um, this model was so good it makes me want to get another one. It really did. I, I love the Class 7. Um, Alice Neal says, hoping to share more of my unusual wagons. Really looking forward to that, I have to say. Um, Kelly Ashford says, Tony, I don't want to pester you, but when will I see the story you're working on? Um, uh, Philip Page says, Wangok, my layout is loosely based on Cow's Station. I love the Isle of Wight. I have the Terrier Freshwater. Now, I, I don't know which one number nine actually is. Um, it's, it's disappeared over there. Um, it's that Fishbourne. Uh, I know they all had names. And there were, I think it was about six Terriers made it to the island. Um, big hello to Robert's train set. Uh, Ham Shackleton. Uh... Uh, Speaking of stories, Jack. Baton Dimonon says there were some um, some scrotes that stole an entire copper roof of a church here in Sweden. Unfortunately, yeah, we get that with the lead roofing on church as well. Oh, yeah. yes. Speaking of stories, mm -hmm. um, a few weeks ago, uh, Eric Bray said that he was having trouble with Amazon because they weren't uh, they weren't really promoting small time authors. Mm. So, Jen and I bought one of his books. Yes, yeah, so we purchased uh, one of his books. Tea Break Tales. It's Tea Break Tales. short stories. Excellent for just reading one just before you go to bed. Definitely. So we're always really happy to support other uh, authors as well. And also, don't forget, my book's still available. Have you posted the link in the chat? I haven't, but uh, Eric is a member of the Monday Club. He does come along. Definitely. So, so yeah. Eric Bray, big shout out. And uh, really, really pleased to pick up one of your books. Um, so we've got that here, yeah, but also Eric, if you're in the chat at the moment, send you your link over. Uh, yeah, definitely. And also, I always say, um, quite happy for people to plug their own YouTube channels. We understand exactly how difficult it is to gain traction in an audience. So I don't mind if you do it the once. Uh, just post yeah. the URL. Hopefully. Just don't spam. We're always happy mm -hmm. to help people out because uh, both of us get frustrated with the kind of YouTubers who try and pull the ladder up after them. Yes, yeah. It, um, it's not a zero-sum game. We can all enjoy the hobby. Or the ones who um, get all snooty because they see other people being sponsored. At the end of the day, you get sponsored if you have something to give back to the retailer. They don't just give yeah. stuff away. You have to work for it. Can we switch the uh, oh, camera? Big hello we done that for a while. I've just done it now. Right. Uh, big hello to Brian Mozer. Sorry I'm late, being on online with St. John. Uh, no worries. Nobody is ever late to the Monday Club. Everybody else has just been inconsiderately early. But it's great to see you. And don't forget as well, you can catch up with all that you may have missed 
um, through the um, uh, YouTube, it goes up as an ordinary video. Don't forget to tickle that like button, share, and sharing is caring as well. Share us on social media, let everybody know that the Monday Club Terrier Fest is live and dangerous. We keep trying to get up to that 400 consecutive people online at the same time. We never quite get there. Oh, we'll get there eventually. Uh, Liam at New Mills Model Railway, this is me plugging in. A great hello to you as well. Uh, Ham Shackleton says, that's me. I've already got two of Jen's signed by both of you. Oh, thank you ever so much. Have you put the link to my books in the uh, thing as no. well? No. I've, no. I'll, well, I'll do will. it, do it. I will in a minute. I'm yeah, just trying and to sort As we come out. up to Christmas, a great Christmas presents. Not just the sci-fi books, but we've also got the comic collections as well. Um, and also, I think you can get... Do the links also let them get the um, um, the other books as well? Yeah, all the books are linked. Yeah, so I've got loads of books. I think I've got about 14 that have been published over the there years. There we are. Ham puts up uh, the link to Eric Bray. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you, very Thank you very much for that. So everybody do go and check him out and support him on that link by buying his books. Uh, Tony Northeastern says, great stream. Bye, everyone. Bye to you. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed it tonight. You take care and hopefully see you again next time. Um, Alexander, hi to you. Uh, Kelly Ashford says, I have the patience of a saint, Tony. I know the happiness comes to those who wait very much. Ham Shackleton also adds, and also available sauce. on e-reader. E-readers are a big thing. Mm. Remember that time we were at one of your book signings? Yeah. And everyone kept coming over saying, I've just bought your book on e-book. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you. A lot of them have. That, that, that was very appreciated. Robert, We've got 800 of these in the warehouse. Yeah. To shift. Robert's train set says, I did a live stream where I did a live recording of my next uploaded video, which I uploaded the following week. That um, I have to say, actually, live streams are a really good way to go. If you're looking to build your YouTube channel, do check out the live stream program guide, which is a great way of getting the uh, your daily dose of vitamin train and also getting a good deal of social interaction as well, which is obviously can be quite tricky in these troubled times at the moment. And um, so the community has been very good at pulling together to help that happen. Um, uh, let's have a look. Oh, uh, Clive Kobold says, Hi Russell, yes I'm also looking forward to the Helgen Class 86 l electric locomotive, so I have three on order. Actually that is another one I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Leslie Gilpin says, LOL, what's Christmas? Well it's like now, but more expensive. You alright over there, cupboard monkey? You're it's, getting a few pains in your side. It's, it's that clump in my side again. Um, <laughs> Don't worry everyone, it's not fatal, it's just annoying. Big hello to the Learning Spaceman and Mark Holt. Uh, Paul of Bramley Junction, a uh, good evening to you as well. Map the Dragon Railways. I was in the 80 subscriber region at the time when I asked Fox Transfers if they would send me some things to review. And they sent me over £20 worth of stuff. You don't need subs to receive goodies. Very much, definitely. And there's a lot of uh, retailers and manufacturers who are very keen to support up-and-coming uh, YouTube channels, definitely. So yeah. it's really great to see them supporting channels in that way. Excellent, yes. Mm. Alexander asks, what's your view on Hornby 66779 Evening Star, please? Thanks. Um, I think the Hornby Class 66 is a good solid model. Um, it's the, in the railroad, I think it's the X Lima moulding. It's not too bad. The price is where it really wins home. You can fit it with TTS Class 66 sound. So it's a really good value for money package. If you want to go for more finesse, you then have Backman at the next price bracket up. And then above that, you also have the Hattons version as well. Uh, Mark Holt asks, is Zoe going to get Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Um, yes. <laughs> Eventually. After the fiasco of Assassin's Creed Unity, though, I don't buy Ubisoft until they've been patched. <laughs> <laughs> so I will get it eventually. Breezer707 asks, Hi Jenny, what new southern locomotive would you like to see ready to run? Um, I'm trying to think actually. Um, there's probably... Um, see, I could tell you um, LNER ones. I'd love to see the J78 and the J92. Both of them are crane tanks. In terms of southern... I'm racking my brains now. Um, 
I did spot a couple which really did look quite interesting. Um, but off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. I'll be honest. Sorry about that. Um, thank you, Flymo Chairman One, for um, sharing the link for Crossways Point Junction's channel. Um, Stephen Cameron, absolutely right. The bad times will pass, and we will be stronger and better when they do. Um, I'm just looking at the time. Uh, how many videos do we have? A fair few, so we will be getting I'm started. I'm thinking, right, in the next five minutes, let's start work yes, on uh, showing... We We've got a load carried over from last week. I know a lot of people have been very, very excitedly doing a terrier themed video. So we've had two weeks worth of people doing that. Yes. So we're going to start uh, prepping ready for uh, doing some of your videos. You're which... not just jumping straight to the... No, no, no. I'm That's chatting, okay then. Changing the, the link. Angus's trains. Jenny, are you getting a rocket open coach? Now, I don't have one on order, it has to be said. Um, in two minds about that, not least because the uh, actual rocket is a little bit weedy when it's pulling stuff. And I, Would it go around your new layout? No, because my new layout is 009. Well, oh, that's your fault mm. then, isn't it? And Malcolm Phillips says... She'll end up getting one, you know. Malcolm Phillips says, just feeling a bit down tonight. Wales going oh. into national lockdown from Friday. Plenty to do on model layout, so that will keep me going. And uh, very much, I think... Um, a lot of people have found um, newfound inspiration in hobbies and it shows how important hobbies are um, because they've helped all of us really ride through a lot of this lockdown and but it's one the of the things time, that we... Jen, this is the uh, uh, social cost of lockdown very much and, and there's a lot of people i think almost feel left behind yes. especially if you maybe live on your own and you rely on being able to go out to events, uh, to uh, model railway clubs, that kind of thing, for interaction. And now you suddenly find you can't even meet up with close friends. It's um, hard. It is very hard. And it's one of the reasons that we've been, um, we've worked really hard to get the Monday Club. Every single Monday, we haven't missed one for probably over 18 months now but Even certainly you've been ill we've been doing them just to make sure that people have that yeah well, i mean like uh, i'm speaking from mm. personal experience here i've only seen my family twice since christmas because yes. lockdown has destroyed that ability to just go and see them they yeah. have 250 miles away very much so, so absolutely sympathized and it's one of the reasons we've just founded the the facebook mm -hmm. um group page and what we'd like to encourage is for people to talk to each other host topics talk with each other um you know we don't have you made is it like where people have to request to join i don't know how to stop that but i will look into it and so do people have to request group. they do but I've, as we've been uh, chatting through that tonight i've just been accepting every membership that's come in that's fine that's fine we probably need to make a couple of moderators as well at some point you aren't even a member yet so i'll be <laughs> making you a moderator when we finish oh this. i'll be like sorry 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 you can't come in your name's not on yeah the jen's going to be a bouncer yeah no 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 i'm saying somebody's going to tell me that so sorry your name's not on the list oh yeah someone's going to bounce jen mm. definitely definitely but it's part of why we want to create that is to try and help build the social interaction. I know there are a lot of great Facebook groups already, but certainly I thought one that is actually um, dedicated for you guys in the Monday Club um, might be quite a nice little idea. Okay, the first uh, one we've got now for the, the big uh, virtual exhibition, Jen, mm -hmm. is Tim Condrup. He's got a GWR 3700 class, City of London. And a 56 xx do you want to turn the sound down i will turn the sound off yeah, uh, yeah. well spotted so do you want to uh press yeah the make button? that make that full screen mm -hmm. so we're going to go straight over to your the first of your now, this is videos. tim's and uh, we've seen tim's layout a few times we have think, actually but uh, i do like it he's got a bit of style to it and it's different to what we see on some others what Def it's a switch so, oh right ah so, so um, I can't remember do? the the yeah uh, possibly an on off switch or is it what ah is? there we go oh oh that oh, is sweet. I like the way it just lines up that is nice yeah you always have to fiddle with yours don't you I do mine is hand cranked so will that now move to the next one that is no oh no there we go here we go that is pretty nifty I do like the city class so thirty seven xx. 
really is nice. Um, I've got two of them actually. I've got the City of London in the same livery as that, and then I've got um, Kilkenny, which I always think of South Park. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. <laughs> oh no, no, that's Lock, Stock and Two Smokes. Kenny, oh, Kenny. Oh my God, if you can hear, Kenny. yeah. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, if you can hear me, mate. Get back that's in the car. That's an interesting one there, the GW one. The, it's like the fifty six XX. Did say it will, at the start. It will be, yeah. I, I've got one as well, but in BR livery. If you but remember, it, I got it from. I, I remember actually. Um, I was in two minds between that and the B one. We were at Ian Allen in Manchester, and I, I asked you. I said, yeah, which one? I do you vaguely want? remember things. Yeah. I think at the time I was trying to convince you to buy a ticket to ride or to let me buy it, and you said, "No, I'm not interested." And then when <laughs> I eventually just bought a copy. You loved it. Yeah, very much. But um, I, I like this, the mm, angled tanks on the, the 56XX. Yeah. It's got an interesting look to it. Mm. Um, ben Tullett says, Oh no, those workmen have fallen into the turntable pit. Ah, you, <laughs> we didn't need them. <laughs> um, David Scott says, uh, Just got back from Sweden on Friday. What a shock back in the UK. Yeah, um, it's definitely it's something that... Do you want to queue up the next one? I do, but I want to also um, clean up the fact that I've just spilled cork all over myself. I love the way, actually, people I have just caught a, a quick glimpse of that, that it's actually advertising this very live stream there. <laughs> On your channel. <laughs> yeah. While you're watching with your own hands. <clears throat> very much. 57... So, you watch yourself? No, no hold on. Um... Thank 50, you for that, Tim. Yeah, 57305 Northern Princess. City of Birmingham, Jenny, is your other city. Um, I thought mine was Kilkenny. I actually know, yeah, you're, you're probably you, right. I think Kilkenny is the one that's been announced. Yeah, to be honest with uh, you, Jen, the Monday Club probably knows your uh, layout better than you they do. They do, actually. I've done several um, complete locomotive tours. I should probably do a, an update um, going through all the ones that I've bought recently. Um, or at least since the last time because um, actually one of the things that I've been going in for in a big way and I, I must name check as well um, it's over there but there's somebody on RM web I bought a locomotive off eBay and when it came it came with a little note tucked in the box saying hi Jenny uh, looking forward to perhaps seeing this loco on a future video and they, they did give their, their name and uh, their username as well and um, I, I am going to do a full review on that, actually. So um, um, it will get a video to itself, and I, I will name check them in that. But uh, it, the second time it's happened to me, actually, I've bought something <laughs> off uh, basically one of you guys and in, anonymously on eBay, and then they've gone, like, oh, it's Jenny, hello. <laughs> <laughs> but right, are we ready for the next one? Okay. The next one is Two Cars for Costless from CSX Rensville. Radio, no worries. So let's bring this up. And, uh, so CSX Rensville sent this in, so I'm going to press the button. Let's have a quick look at this. Mm. I like his intro, that's uh, nice. Oh. Oh, I like, hey, that is nice. Yeah, I love the American HO stuff. And actually, we're going to be looking to do some reviews of um, US outline products in the future. Not just that, but uh, in a future monkey build, we'll be uh, considering a big boy, won't we? Well, actually, what I'm thinking is I've got, I love these little US short line uh, switching layouts. And I am actually inclined to say, you know what, I'm going to get you some Walther's kits, uh, like US buildings and stuff. And maybe you can build the buildings for a future project build. You mean I'm going to do the work for you? Mm. My goodness, that looks real. That looks like a photo on a cloudy day. It, it is lovely. I, I lo and I like the, the weeds in the track as oh well. Oh my goodness. You see there on the left, yeah. there's weeds it's between the It's so sleepers. good. I, I love the US outline stuff. It's so different to what we're used to seeing, isn't mm. it? Definitely. Kelly Ashford says the city engine Jenny doesn't have is City of Truro. Um, I do, yeah, I don't have City of Truro because I've got City of London in exactly the same livery. Mm. Um, and the problem I've got is I, I basically, if I bought everything I wanted, I'd have no money. And, and the, no house. Yeah, the house would get repossessed. Um, so I've got two 37XX City class uh, locos. So... Unfortunately, that's where I've kind of had to stop. 
Uh, Mike and Sue put them junction saying nice layout. Uh, very much. Um, yeah, it's photogenic. It's, it I looks like it. real. It's so Definitely. well done. Uh, Leslie Gilpin says CSX Rensville layout is great. Very much. Yeah, I mean, look at some of these. The way that he's got, like, mm. it, it, it just looks like rust yeah. or faded paint. And it's Ma that kind of thing that gets the realism. Yeah. Um, McBen Man one asks, Hi Jenny, what is your favourite locomotive livery? At the moment, I'm really liking London, Brighton and South Coast Railway, I have to say. Retired LEO says, love CSX and Northern Southern. Yeah. Um, I thought your favourite livery was that purple one. Yeah, I like it. But Don Gitt's Model Railway says, future event su suggestion, DMU Fest. Why if not? we expand, expand that to EMUs as well, because um, otherwise I've got an awful lot of Class 108s and not a lot else. Um, I, I really like this layout. I love the, the grass and um, it, it really does look nice. I, I'm really impressed by this layout. It has to Jenny be said. Kirk had a fest. DMEMO. <laughs> DMEMU. Shanghai264359 says lovely US layout. Uh, Russell Benton asks, says, I love the CSX, is that a Dash 40? I'm not well versed in, um, it looks like a GP40 to me, but then again, most American locos look like a GP40 to I me. I didn't like that one, because it's got a bit of chunkiness to it. It's almost well, they've got a bigger. Like... they've got a bigger loading gauge so yeah, they can what do I'm saying is, it's almost I love the box the cars as so much going on with it. I love the railroad box cars. Mm. Um, they just got a, a very aesthetically pleasing shape. Yeah. That is a bit of character to it. I like that. That is a lovely little shunting layout. And that, I want to do something like that as a project layout. All right. American HO. Jen, that's fine by me. Mm. I will help. Definitely. Um, We're going to jump back now to the main thing so that we can move on. But I'm going to put yeah. a link to this into the chat. Hythe Kent. I'm going to actually change that over there because the train's going around over there. Hythe Kent asks, does any maker produce ready-made buildings? Uh, see, Backman Scene Craft, uh, Hornby Scale Dale. Um, uh, but also, I think Walthers have a, a range of ready-made kits as well. Um, but they've also got some fairly simple-to-build kits. Uh, Noch and Fowler as well. I do like that Noch thing that uh, mm. I built for you. That was good. Tim Condrup says, I got the Hornby Piccadilly Terriers and Stepney from the Thomas one. Um, definitely, yeah. I mean, um, in the old version, I've got Whitechapel in that lovely LBSC livery. But actually, it looks naff on the old version. Okay, what we've got um, next isn't a video. Uh, Barry Turner has sent us uh, saying, please see attach photos of my NSE three rail Dover Priory layout. Uh, so, are we able to show the photos? Yes. So, so should I go to the browser now? Please do. So uh, these are some photographs that's been sent here. Actually, How interesting is that? I do like that little terminus station there. Mm. And again, it's really nice to see what other people have done with their yes. layouts. And that's so, part of the beauty of the, yeah, the virtual railway. Because it's, it's a lot about giving people inspiration and ideas. Right, should we move to the next photograph? Absolutely. I, I like the sky background oh. as well. So, so that's looking the other way. Yeah. So it's not just like the railway, he's got a well. lot of uh, character going on with the bus terminal. Actually, because there's a lot of like Brit bus and EFE buses. There's a lot of really quite nice buses mm. um, that you can get. Um, I, I've got one, I've got a GMPTE uh, Leyland Atlantean, which is quite a nice model as well. Right, uh, next photo. Ah. How Dover good is Priory that? State. I like your station building. That is so well done. And that quite often can be what captures the look and feel of a specific location. Yeah. I mean, mm. is that a custom made building? Right. Uh, I, would I expect think it the, is, yeah. The, the lettering is, but yeah. is it a, a cinema? kit or something like that or? i don't know uh, it, wow garthian says i'm going to be starting my micro layout soon just need to get some space set up for the three boards to be made in definitely and uh, um, actually one of the things that we've proven with the 009 project build is that you can actually make a continuous oh. running small layout down to quite a small size look at that i do like that that is nice that little building at the front i've i've eaten there it's a pizza hut in durham 
Pizza Hutter pizza. That is, of course, a joke. But it doesn't um, look. It looks actually, like that it look, I think it, I think the kit is actually McDonald's. Um, maybe is that a Walther's kit? Yeah, Melchester Model Railway says that is a really unique station building. Yes, mm. and it really captures the feel of the build. I think. Mm. So it's great. We're, we're stuff having here. a few other people saying Whoa. Melchester Model Railway says. Uh, a great idea, a DMU EMU fest would be great. Okay, maybe we should make that the theme for next week. Uh, DMU EMU fest. So, um, uh, I mean, it doesn't have Need to, to be. Maybe build, right, make a new t shirt for that as well. Uh, I don't think it'll sell so well. It's a little <laughs> bit more niche, but I think for something different. So, um, it doesn't have to be just modern image. You know, DMUs and EMUs go right back. So, for example, Rails of Sheffield have got coming out at some point their Northeastern Railway rail car. So, we will accept rail cars as well. But, of course, you know, don't feel that you have to sit one out. If you want to make your videos on what you have to hand, that is absolutely, absolutely. fine. Absolutely. I do How like, I like that, that junction. Look? That junction there in the, the right hand. Worn. It looks used and it yeah. looks right. It's a lot going on, yeah. very much, and there's a lot of bits and pieces of detail there as well. Right, oh, you'll look, love this. Uh, right, I've Matthew got another... Dunmo says, Jenny and Zoe, my friend has 3D printed Lady Penelope's uh, Rolls Royce, the pink one from Thunderbirds. Oh, nice! And the Rolls Royce from the Darling Buds of May. <laughs> now, my goodness, nice. there's a blast from the past. You're going to do Goldfinger's um, Rolls Royce as well. Oh, that is, is the that final the end? one for that. Rightio. So we shall um, move on there. So thank you ever so much for sending those photos in. Yeah, thank you, Barry. That was really good. I'm really impressed. Dover Priory, yeah. one to watch. David Scott says, there is or was an American layout group on the exhibition circuit that run huge length double stack container trains. Yet there's some really great American outline stuff on the exhibition circuit, I must admit. Um, and I, I've fallen in love in a way with uh, uh, a lot of, uh, of stuff. Right. Uh, we've got we're going to jump straight in because we've got a lot. So here the is the kitchen railway. We all company. love the kitchen railway. Oh, so we've got um, there's a, a um, terrier number two, which is I can't read that. Southern number two. Fresh water. So here we've got a goes. terrier fresh water. Those are the same Southern Railway yeah, cattle trucks that your dad's got on top of his bureau in his front room. Yeah. I always love the different yeah. character that the Kitchen Railway comes up with. It's yeah. just so different. Definitely. Is that a dinosaur? <laughs> I don't know. I like the little wee grey Fergie TEA20 there, and that's a Fordson, I believe. I do love farm. Look, the old old style farm tractors very much. I think I've, I've got um, a David Brown and a Fordson knocking about here somewhere. Uh, AEC Mammoth eight wheeler, Series One Land Rover. Morris Minor was that I just saw? Kelly uh, Kelly Ashford says she won't be on the next Monday Club because Strictly Come Dancing's back. So we've got some competition now, Jen. Have we? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I, I can't really compete with that. Um, well, well, but we you can really got room still for dancing in here, have we? No. Let's try. No, no, no. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've seen people on fire move better than you. But um, don't worry, because you can still watch us on the catch-up as well. Southern Train Girl uh, said, said, wow, that's a really good layout. Uh, Fly My Chair one nice layout, what what nice detail. Thing? Um, Jen, uh, Jen, what's the, the what? what? Is, is that a bag? It was something pink. I, I don't um, know what it was. Um, ben Tullett says, Oxford Rail, of course. Oxford Rail, Harb and Hamlet also do you UK outline ready-made buildings. Woodland Scenics make American ready-made buildings, so there is a good yes. choice out there. And actually, I've got some of the Bankman Scene Craft going into the project building. They are lovely. Oh, yes. Mm. Everyone, you've got to look forward to this next one. I think it's going to be the big best hello, episode we've had. Big hello to Wyvern Model Railway. Well, Garthian asks, can we have a freight fest? We can have whatever people want. See, I... <laughs> Within reason. We'll put it to the vote, because um, I, I, I am aware that DMU EMU Fest might be a bit niche, because all I've really got is I've got an awful lot of Class 108s. <laughs> um, ben Tullett says, someone lend Jenny a Class 43 HST in BR grey and blue. Actually, that and the Intercity Swallow are two liveries. I really would love that. I love I've, these I've grown to, to like uh, the um, HST. Oh, look, watch out, Piggy. Watch out, dinosaur. Yeah, rawr. People in the chat saying, is that dinosaur? Ooh, that's a TARDIS. It is a TARDIS. It keeps moving. 
Yeah, well, oh, no, no, the doctor keeps flying at places. There we go. But yeah, people in the chat are saying, is that dinosaur got a ticket? <laughs> yeah, sorry, no ticket, you can't come on. If he parks there long enough, he will have. Mm. Right, guys, so we're going to move on again. Can Jenny, can you pick Z a uh, screen? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, well, uh, Z practice. Fantasy Train says, promise Garthy in a freight fest, please. He really wants one. I know Garthian has been a big, big supporter of the channel. So um, let's just see uh, what other people are saying. Um, David Shaw says, Hi Jenny, given this year is coming to a close, is the Daypole Class 29 still your model of the year or do you have a new must-have favourite? Um, I'm going to have to reevaluate. There's a few models that are all jockeying for position. The uh, Princess Royal in Express Passenger Blue, um, the Daypole Class 29... But then also Box Hill from um, uh, the Rails Daypole Terrier has just is, is slam dunking into certainly into the top top ten. Um, class seven oh seven oh oh nine factory weathered is up there as well. So I, I'm when we get a bit closer to Christmas, I'm going to do like my top of, top of the picks top tip, uh, picks. Uh, but yeah, definitely it's still in 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 contention. Okay, next uh, up we have an interesting one. Shanghai264359. Now, he's always uh, a good one to watch. Yeah, I particularly like how he, how he disguises his um, uh, controllers as a, a factory. When you see it, you'll... Yes. you're. And this really... is a short film called Terrier to the Rescue. Oh no, we've broken down and need a tow. Would it... Oh my goodness! Don't worry, warship terrier to the rescue! Da, 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 da. Oh my goodness! It's such a good layout. Hmm. I'll be there in a minute. I'm just going to read out the things because Jen's still looking at the comments, and she can't stop me. Ha ha! There's definitely uh, oh uh, lead, you, leading terrier. the warship. I I love the way that people have really got into this terrier fest I love spi it. spirit. Look at oh, you, Southeastern SSCR. <laughs> oh, it's such a good layout. I love Definitely. It. Um, Crossways Point Junction says, I will send you a video next week of my HST. is really looking forward to it, I have to say. I'll um, get you do, to the next station. Yeah. I'm um, just reading out the comments. Uh, if you send URLs to zoe at zoerobinson.com, and uh, that will get through. Um, Tim Wilmot says, I have a Virgin Trains Class 390 Pendolino TTS sound by Olivia's Trains. <laughs> Saved by the Terrier. Always dependable. <laughs> oh, that uh, was brilliant. Thank you so much, Shanghai264359. Always a pleasure. Uh, uh, Flymo so, Chairman wants... Uh, yeah, yeah, if people want to share what their channel is, I'm more than happy for them to do that. Absolutely. Um, we're getting a lot of votes, actually, in for DMU EMU Fest. So if you want Freight Fest, you're going to have to get more people voting for that. Um, actually, J94 says, just an idea, Jenny. How about a Big Four Fest where you get four locos, one from the Big Four companies back in 1923? Uh, Brian Stone says, good night all. A very interesting hour and a half. Thanks again. You're absolutely welcome. Um, so uh, what have we got next? Gosh we're, gosh, we're nearly up to the top of the hour. We have are, we got a lot more videos? We have a fair few. This is Skipsy Trains and Mrs. Skipsy. Oh, excellent. So uh, let's get this one up. Uh, when I can uh, get it to load. Okay, Skipsy Trains, here we go. Okay, yeah. Here we are, Test Operations October 2020. Oh. Have we been watching this layout mm. since the start? I have a feeling I think we, we have. have. I like that bridge. Yeah, you I are. really like that bridge. Uh, you notice how there's two different shapes of the arches. You've got the smaller ones on yeah. shore, and then the larger ones to uh, bridge the river. That is really nice. Really nice. It's Pew a big bridge. In, it's a big bridge. That is actually. I, I really like in the bridge. 57305 Northern Princess says, Great Central Fest. David Cook, vote for freight. Um, right. Uh, Tell you what, guys. I'll put a post on the new Facebook group. Oh, you can do a poll. Yeah, we'll do a poll. So look out on the Facebook page um, that we've just set up for the Monday Club. The, no, the Facebook group, even, for the um, 
uh, the Jenny Monday Club, and we're going to put a poll up there, uh, and um, yeah, we'll people can vote for what oh, theme wow. they want, and we will uh, let you guys know which theme came out on top. Um, I think we'll, we'll say closing on Friday, midnight on Friday. Yeah. And the winning theme is the theme for next week's Monday Club. I love that wow. bridge, actually. That is really nicely built. What kind of... Uh... Oh, James Petz asks for the Facebook group link. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like the junction. Oh, yes. I approve of the junction. Can Look someone at... put the link into the... Uh... Chat please, because I'm in the middle of doing the production on this bit, and Jen doesn't know what the Ooh. link is. Jen doesn't understand technology. That's I, 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 I love that bridge with the junction. That it's so really well done. is nice. So you've got the four parallel tracks, but a lot of complicated. Um... There's a lot of running value here. You mm. can you can do a lot with it. Well, McBenman won us um, throwing a curveball, Foreign Locomotive Fest. Lots of people coming Jen in for free. to take part. <laughs> You've got like, what, one? <laughs> Somewhere. David Cook says freight. Ben Tullett, J94 Backmans are good even though they are expensive. Melchester actually, Model yeah. Railway. They won't give people much time to actually make the video. Tell That's you a what, good then. point. Okay, we'll, we'll have the closing date on Friday. We'll declare the, the uh, winner of the festival on Friday. We'll have a standard Monday club on the Monday. Just like an anything goes. Well, no, no, hold on, hold on. festival the week after. Hold on. People will be able to see which one's winning, so you can preemptively make your videos because the poll will tell you which one's got the most votes. Perhaps. Dean Fielding says, Don't see how Strictly could compete with Monday Club. I would rather watch Paint Dry. Love Monday Club, real people. Thank you ever so much. Sadly, don't uh, he's uh, yeah. not in the majority because, unfortunately, a lot of people love Strictly. Oh, it's, like only my parents. it's only because. You guys haven't shared the stream enough to let everybody know that we are here and would love to have their company. So, um, what have we got next? Oh, uh, Manthony 1956 says, The CSX 1514 was is a GP15T, not a common loco. Usually found on short lines, it was rated at 1,500 horsepower. It was marketed in the late 70s, early 80s as a replacement for the GP79s built in the 1950s. Aha. Uh, right. Michael Pollitt says, Hi Jenny, late again tonight. Just been finishing making Lancashire boilers for the layout. Hope to be on time next week. No worries. Belmont Junction says, Good night, Jenny and Zoe. Good night to you. It's been great having your company. The Growler Blackwood Engage layout. Uh, hi to you. Uh, McBenman once says, Can you make a poll on YouTube? I don't know. Yes. How. Yes, we can. Now that he mentions it, yes, we can. So, so should we, we should have the poll on YouTube as well. Then. Okay. I'll, I'll right. let my technical monkey sort that out. Liam at New Mills Model Rowers says, I love Strictly, but take one. two on a Monday can wait. Excellent. Um, okay, we've had an interesting one come through for from Guion Davies. Uh, some inspiration for Jen for a double or nine layout. This is going to be a oh, bit different. Oh, right. Do you I, want I, to bring up? This is the final thing we've got for the virtual tour. Oh, this I is like Swansea this. Swansea Railway Modelers Group. I, oh, I like that with the that swans. That is so well done. Gosh, that How is a good tight is that? corner. Yeah, and it, what it shows is... It's you, Thomas the Tank Engine there. Yeah, 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 well yeah it place. is. Oh, I like that. And look how small it is. That is really nicely done. That is amazing. And it shows that you can have a nice little fully working, continuous running layout mm -hmm. in a very tiny space. And that's one of the things that we've been trying to show on the 009 project build on the yeah. channel. Now, I love those swans, right? They've that cycled so all lovely. the way through. But um, I really like really, it. Really, really yeah, nice. You don't need a lot of space. It doesn't have to turn take up a lot. You can have a lot of play value, a lot of running value Definitely. in a small space. Yeah. James Pett says that is one dinky layout, definitely. Yeah, that I wouldn't mind that in the corner of a living room. <laughs> which is what something I wouldn't normally say about your stuff. Right, Jen, that is all we've got from these. So, so is that wow. everything that people have sent in? Well, I'm looking at the time. It's bringing us right up to the top of the hour. See, I timed so, it So um, let's um, basically, um, next week, um, <laughs> so there'll be a poll that goes up. I'll give you the thing, but you'll get an idea fairly quickly, I guess, as well, as to which way the poll is going. We don't say so it was built with set track. 
Oh, oh right, that's so it's a good. nine inch, so it's nine inch radius. Mm. Um, really impressed by that, actually. It's a lovely little layout that'd be perfect, even like for on a bedside table, you could put that. So, really, really nice. You love some of the comments that are coming in about, uh, the, the, about our hobby here. Mm. The thing about our hobby is that some people literally do make videos about paint drying and they're far more enjoyable than Strictly. <laughs> and then um, Ben Tullett jumps in saying, well, Bob Ross did that and he made a lot of money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, but actually it's ma Ross magic watching Bob Ross. Amazing. Definitely, yeah. Ah, Garthian spotted the TARDIS. <laughs> Excellent. Um, there's a lot of people liking the water as well. And... Um, I have to say, water is one of the things it's on the 009. Yeah, the, on the 009 project build, we're going to be adding a waterfall and a number of pools of water and a little uh, stream as well. So there's going to be a lot of water stuff going on on that. So hopefully, I mean, the project build layout is going to be the project that keeps on giving. So. Um, we're going to try and theme all the episodes. Uh, at the moment, we're working on final um, subterrain form. So it's like the filler layer. It's starting to look like a pro proper model layer. You'll have seen the photos looking like, was it Mashed Potato Mountain from Close Encounters, yeah. the third kind. Um, the track is now actually down. The next video will deal with all of that. And the electrics are going in again. Uh, part three will deal with all of that. Russell Benton says, good night, ladies. Another good one. Thank you very much. Glad you Frank enjoyed Frank Feely says, good night, Jenny and Zoe and everyone else. Thank you very much. Um, um, McBenman1 says, how do you add water on layouts? Carefully. Actually, no, you, um, you, generally resin is quite good. Uh, I, I particularly like the resin method. Um, but you can also do it with varnish, things like that. There's a lot of different methods. You've um, actually had a tutorial video about making water haven't you oh yes we did Where do a went? video uh, up here on Weir Yard doing a pond mm. uh, which was uh, actually went down really really well um, Washing Tunnel one says he uses gloss varnish yeah I've used it in the past very very good for um, uh, if you want like murky canal water you paint your like murky colors in I use Humbrol enamels mm. using mixes of greens and browns looking really murky and then gloss over the top and it gives a really good suggestion of deep, dirty water. Um, <clears throat> right, I'm gonna. Samuel Ives says, "Fantastic evening, thank you." Terriers are one of my favourite. Don't forget, everybody, tickle that like button, share the stream, and also you can check us out over on Patreon if you want to support the channel and help us to keep making the videos that you want to see. And also, a huge thank you goes out to Rails of Sheffield who uh, very, very kindly sent over uh, on loan six different uh, terriers, including the Box Hill in with uh, sound. I'm really, really grateful to them for sending those over. Uh, some great models and look out for later this week. We're going to have a full review of the Rails Staple Terrier, including that sound version, and just show you some of the detail uh, differences that does make the Daypole Terrier uh, uh, head and shoulders above the Hornby one. And I'm not just saying that because they sent it over. Genuinely, when you put like for like side by side, and the one that really shows it off the most, I guess, is the <coughs> improved engine green version. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Brighton has been released by both Hornby and Rails. So it's a really good opportunity to show them side by side. I've also got the Southeastern and Chatham Railway liveried one. I've got a Rails and a Hornby version of that. And I'm going to show them side by side. Um, but you know, not to take anything away from the Hornby Terrier, it is a good model. But I feel that the Rails Terrier is a better model. You pay extra for it, but it is a better model. Uh, but it just it's time for me to basically say good night all it's been great having your company and uh, until next time you take great care of yourself there take care don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so bye for now